I think it's best if we just dive straight in, guys, to be honest. Whoa. Oh, I'm over my head here, isn't I? This is way out of my league. Well, that's it, guys. The results are in. Case closed. So I've never struggled at all to grow plants. A lot of people have told me that's down to my water parameters. I mean, I can't disagree with them. I'm not gonna to pretend to be some sort of expert. I don't know my water parameters. I know the basics, I know my pH, if there's some ammonia in it, because I can test that. And that's about it. And the reason for that is that I've never had to worry about anything else. It's a little bit like, you know, someone who's won the lottery doesn't know a lot about finance today. It's a little bit like that with me, I guess. Everyone's told me that you can grow your plants so well, MD, because you've got magic water. So I've acquired this full scape test lab thing from JBL. I don't know what most of this stuff means, but apparently you guys do and you wanna know what it is. I was told by George Farmer when he visited my old studio back in the summer that the reason my water is good is because it's soft. People like always struggle with hair grass yeah. and then you're just like doing it with no effort at all. Yeah. But a bit of a disclaimer guys, Mark does have super soft water out of his tap which does give you a lot more chance. Now what that means is that the available CO2, background levels of CO2 that is, in soft water is far more available than it is in say hard water. So literally just from filling up with tap water, I've already got more CO2 naturally dispersed in the water than I would in other areas of the country say that have got more hard water. So you're probably thinking, what is soft water and what is hard water? Because I am. Give me two minutes while I Google the answer. Okay, so I looked it up and basically hard water has more dissolved minerals in it. So for instance, rainwater would be very soft and there's no minerals in it, or barely any, I think. And then once that rainwater has then gone through the rocks and everything and ended up in our rivers, eventually into our reservoirs, and then ultimately out of our taps, it will then have dissolved minerals, making it either hard or soft. I guess this depends where you are in, in your country and what rock it's passed through. Ultimately, it's luck. Well, it's not luck, it's just where you live, but <laughs> I live in the southwest of England, so the water here is really good. Apparently, my mum already knows this because when she goes to other areas of the country, her hair is much harder to fix or something. Yeah, I suffer with the same problem. It's really hard to do my hair sometimes when I go elsewhere. But something that having soft water doesn't stop is cyanobacteria. I've actually got some in this tank now. I've treated it with a chemical processy stuff thing. Again, don't know what it is. Said it gets rid of cyanobacteria. I think it's like ChemiClean, but like another version of. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that sorts this tank out because I actually want to reuse this rock soon for another scape we've got coming. I'll explain more about that soon, another video, but for this one, we're talking about water chemistry. I think it's best if we just dive straight in, guys, to be honest. So first thing I'm obviously going to test is the standard stuff like pH and all that. This aquatorium here for our little friend Pancho, who I'm pretty sure is, is actually looks like he talks like this, doesn't he? This will now be Pancho's voice from now on. I'm such an idiot. And this is recently set up, so I think this will be quite a good test to see what a new scape has in terms of water parameters. So what I'll do is I'll test, you know, my tap water as, a, as the, you know, comparison. I'll test a new setup like this, and then I'll test my discus tank, which is the best one. Everyone's got a, like a favorite plant growing tank for some reason. I do as well, and that's my old school discus. I say old school because it's like, over, well, it's about a year old. No, it's not even that. It's about six months old. For some reason, I think that's old because I've not been in the hobby that long. So yeah, my discus tank, which is not the one I'm pointing at now, but it's better to look at this than my face sometimes. My discus tank, I can put anything in there and it grows amazing. If there's algae on a plant, I will put it into my discus tank and it makes the algae go. So that's a brilliant one to test. I'll show you it in a bit, but it needs some maintenance on it first. Maybe I'll put that in the video as well. But yeah, anyway, on with the pH test. Whoa. Oh, I'm over my head here, isn't I? This is, <laughs> this is way out of my league. I better do some reading and then get started. So that's the pH tested. And the top vial here is just normal water with no agent added to it. And the bottom one is where you actually do the test. So you've got like a comparison through the glass so it doesn't affect the coloring. But it looks like, hang on, let me just put you over the top. It looks like it's somewhere between 7.1 and 7.2 pH. So yeah, that's pretty much what I thought that it would be. It's usually when I test with a test strip, it's bang on seven. So that's probably a lot more accurate. So rather than me sitting here and just doing one test at a time, I'm just gonna bang them all out and then give you the results after. <laughs> well, 
Well, the preliminary, preliminary, pre the results are in. <laughs> I've just had a quick look over them and compared them to some values that you would class as good aquascaping or fish keeping in general. It looks like we've got magic water. <laughs> I think it's true. Basically, all of my numbers on a new setup fall right in the range that is suggested for aquascaping, which is brilliant for me. I think for it to be a completely fair test, I should probably test it straight out the tap as well. I don't really need to do the discus tank. The discus tank gets like 30% water changes quite regularly because I quite often use that tank to fill up all the tanks in here. So obviously there's loads of tanks in here, which means it's getting regular water changes. But let me quickly just test the tap water and we'll just see what that comes out straight from the tap. Well, the results have come back from the water tap testing. Water tap testing, tap water testing. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. The only thing that's really different is there's undetectable iron in the tap water. And also the CO2 level coming from the tap is slightly higher than it was in the tank, which makes sense because some of it would have actually dissolved off in the tank over time, especially with that trickling waterfall that I've got in that tank. So the CO2 levels out of the tap are more like 15 parts per million. And they say that like really good aquascaping levels are 25 to 30 in a, you know, that sort of area. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you can see why I'm getting really good success with my plant growth when I've got those background levels already higher. And that's as a result, as said before, from the soft water. Well, that's it guys, the results are in. Case closed. But what can you guys do then if you haven't got magic water? So the idea is that you just basically make your water nothing, like a level playing ground. RO water is effectively what I'm talking about. So it's basically had everything removed out of it and then you can add in whatever you want to make it to the levels you need. Yeah, it's more work, but if you really want to do something, then you'll find a way to do it. Alternatively, you could just move to somewhere with soft water. Well guys, I said in a previous video that if I see the wood shrimp, film it, got the camera on me, there it is. It's looking miles better now. Look. Now you can see why it's called a wood shrimp. When I actually put it in here, it was kind of translucent. Looking a lot more like an Amano. So these blimmin' fish. <laughs> All right, guys. Look at him just waiting there. Perfect. But yeah, he is looking awesome. I think that's the male. It looks like the male to me. But yeah, there you go. All good. I did see the other one. It was hanging around right on the edge of one of my... Oh, you can't see because of reflections. But it was hanging around one of the filters back there. As it likes to do, really. Wherever the flow is good. Well, the whole tank's got good flow, to be fair. That's why this guy's just like, oh... I think I'm just going to peck at this little bit here. So they're not really renowned for sort of scavenging like that. They normally filter feeders, but this guy's kind of doing both as well. Fair deuce, fair deuce. you got to do what you got to do, buddy. You crack on, you little piece of wood. In my last video, I told you about the tank behind me and what I wanted to potentially do with it. Quite a few suggestions come up by yourselves. Better sorority. Um, we had dwarf cichlids, South America. We had cichlids. We had African cichlids. But I think that's what I'm going to go with. You know, I've already got a lot of tanks that are full of greenery and the tank right next to it is going to be a big, massive plant jungle for the angelfish. So, I mean, it'll look really good having just a hardscape pony tank right next to the jungle tank, I think anyway. Plus, I've never kept those kind of fish before and also I've never done a hardscape only tank. How good is that going to look side by side? Like, complete contrast. I think you'll agree with me. I do like the idea of the better sorority tank, though, and I would like to try that at some point. I've heard, just like I said when keeping multiple turtles together, you can wake up one day and there's, like, deaths everywhere. But I think that's when people, like, just start going crazy with the numbers. I think in a decent-sized tank, you put about six or seven female betters, you know, in a heavily planted area with tons of different sort of undulating... Oh, undulating. Where are these new words all just popping up from? Now I don't even know what I said. Yeah, so a better sorority is an option at a later date, but not for this tank. This tank is gonna be for the African cichlids, I think. That's gonna be awesome. I've had a few recommendations from a few people already coming in on what I should go with. Big rock work I'm gonna go for, black background, nice spotlighting, and just a plain sand base. I think that's just gonna be awesome, isn't it? In terms of setup, in terms of setup time and scaping, I mean, there's not going to be a lot to it. This one will be more of a fish tank, if you like. I mean, I've never actually had a fish tank. It's always been sort of plants and then add fish for the accent. So this will be the other way around, which will be quite cool. We've got a nice big filter as well from Waze. Yeah, so that's awesome. We've got that to look forward to. But next up is the discus tank. There's a little bit of issues with it that we need to sort out. But overall, it's just going nuts. Here is the discus tank. You can see it's a bit of a mess. It needs sorting out. It's just grown crazy. Now, I did start with CO2 in this tank about three months ago, I think it was now. But in the last month, I've just had to shut the CO2 off because it's all just grown too fast. And like, as quickly as I'm trimming it, it's all grown back again. That's not the type of tanks that I like to keep. I like ones with sort of lower 
maintenance levels, you know, that you can just enjoy for a longer amount of time without constantly having to trim and all that. But let me pull you in closer so we can have a look at what actually he's doing. Right, so here's my discus. That's George. That's Sunshine. They're doing great. I mean, they are small. They've always been small discus, but you know, that's what happens when you buy cheap discus. <laughs> but who cares? We love them nonetheless. Now we've got some plants in here that I've put in. Found them in my studio underneath some other plants so they suffered a little bit with lighting as you can see so i put them in this tank because it will fix them they'll grow amazing there's quite a bit of algae on the glass the little spot algae there's tons of plants that need trimming duckweed which i didn't put in here but it's found its way in it's just covering the surface all the background stems need trimming blah 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 there's tons to do let's just get on with it quick so here's before So I think basic, oh, oh no, you can't see that. No, no. <laughs> so I think basically what this all boils down to is that soft water is brilliant for raising the background levels of your CO2. So right from the outset, I've already got a bit of an advantage yet, and that's probably why I get such good growth without CO2. It's probably why a lot of people don't believe me when I say I don't use CO2. I mean, it's not the perfect range, but it's, it's good, you know. 15 parts per million versus the 25 to 30 that is you know normally what's used for injected co2 so you know i'm kind of halfway there which is kind of fortunate you know i didn't know all these things when i started obviously i just put plants in the tank and they grew well now don't get me wrong not every plant grows like fantastic for me for instance s repens like it doesn't grow it just melts and then it gets smaller and more and more horrible but like so i just don't use it but i think the one thing i can say to you though is things like java moss java fern anubius Limnophila, all these sort of really simple plants, yeah? They're always really green and they always look really good. So you shouldn't sit there and think, oh, I don't have water like MD, so I can't, that's why I'm not succeeding. Nah, nah, that's, that's bull. Pick easy plants and pick a lot of them. Just flood your tank with green, have a nice sand foreground. You can't go wrong, stick some wood in there. It always looks good. Get some colorful fish going, like Cardinal Tetra is just great against black background green plants you know just just stick with things like that guess what i'm saying is keep it simple and keep it easy i find that like lots of the simple things work well together quite often i get messages from people saying what do you think of my tank now i'm not rude and reply and say oh that's a bit bare i say that you know that's good but i'm also thinking just get more just get more plants and i know that's easy for someone to say who gets plants for free but there was a time not long ago at all when my plants weren't free and i chucked tons of money into them and why did I do that because i enjoyed it why not what else am i going to spend my money on <laughs> so i spent so much money on tropical plants before i was sponsored by them and i always made sure i got like you know if i had like a 60 centimeter tank i'd make sure i get like six or seven pots of of java fern and a load of it. I'd spend like 60 to 70 quid on plants just like that because why not? I don't go out to the pub and things like that. So this is my passion. What better thing than putting good healthy plants into your tank and providing a really nice environment for your fish. Guess what I'm saying is work to your parameters, whatever they may be, buy lots of plants, fill up your tank with them and you cannot go wrong. I mean, I barely do water changes on most of my tanks, if I'm honest, you know, I probably do like once a week, once every two weeks, 20%. And why is that? Because my plants are just cleaning everything for me. Make sure you buy a lot of plants, make sure you're enjoying your fish tanks, and I'll catch you next time.